Hello guys, welcome back to another video. This should be a familiar sight because it's very similar to another device I took a look at. I was deciding what video to make today because I haven't made one for ages and I was considering doing the Windows 2000 small form fact machine which I'm fairly certain I made a video on before but it doesn't appear to be there on my channel so I don't know what's up with that but then I was looking through my kind of thin client craze and there might be another video on the SX0. Bear with me on that one. And I discovered I never actually made a video about this thing. I know for a fact I shot one. I shot an entire video on this. I do not have the files. It isn't on a YouTube or anything. Shut up, Facebook. I'm busy. So, what is this thing? This is a wise... Oh, you can see my cigarette stuff. Let's move that. This is a wise Winterm WT3235LE. This is very similar to the WT1200LE in terms of design. But in fact, this one is beige. And if I'm being honest, I prefer this better. But we have a Windows-powered logo down there. The astute among you will already probably know what is um, powering this thing. Uh, especially players at the Dreamcast. But with all that said... I think I'm just going to go ahead and take the cover off this thing and we're going to take a look at it and I'll talk more about the hardware and what it runs on and what it does. Hint, not a lot. Now, with the top off, we can see this bears a striking resemblance internally, mostly, to the WT1200 LE apart from two things. This, this, and this. And the rear I.O. because that's a bit different. Firstly, we're going to start with the uh, sodium slot, if I could get the sodium out. Oh, I don't have to. The label's on the top. This is, I believe, a PC1, yep, PC133S, 256 megabyte memory at 133 megahertz. Because this does have expandable memory, although it doesn't really help because, A, Windows CE runs perfectly fine on the, I believe, 32 megs that is on board. This is not 32 megs, this is the processor. Um, B... There is no easy way to upgrade the OS, apart from the use of this slot, more about that later. And see, this is a 256 megabyte module, I installed it, it only allowed me to see 128. Plus the built-in storage, not storage, the built-in, um, what's the word I'm looking for, the built-in memory, giving me a total of 160 megabytes. So it completely ignored half of this, but I don't really care, this cost me pennies on eBay. Under here is the processor, uh, to the best of my knowledge, this would be an AMD Geode S1 at 233 MHz. I would have to double check on that. No, nope, I was wrong, it is actually a Geode GX1 running at 300 MHz, so it's quite a bit closer to the um, SX0 than I thought. I have no idea if this is a full 32-bit CPU or an ARM one. Based on the fact it's running Windows CE, I would have to guess it's an ARM CPU. I'm just going to try and quickly research this before I finish speaking. So I can find out if it is indeed x86 or ARM. I mean, it's got MMX extensions that would suggest it's x86. Although if it was x86, I would assume they would have gone with an actual competent version of Windows, not Windows CE, because that's kind of universally hated. 0.18 microns. Lovely. Nope, doesn't say anything. But this website will tell me this has 32 megabytes of flash that is non-expandable, and 64 megs of RAM on board. I thought it had 32 megs. Was 128 and 64? What? I swear this only saw about 160 megs. Whatever, I'll figure it out later. So yes, it has 64 megs of RAM on board, apparently. This is the removable BIOS chip, and this is where things potentially get interesting. This is a uh, smart media card slot. That is a form factor that was mostly seen in digital cameras. This, as far as I could tell, is pretty much the only way I can go about potentially upgrading or replacing the system firmware. Because this is a completely legacy-free device, as it was marked by um, WISE, meaning it has no legacy I.O. and more importantly, no traditional PC BIOS, which means I can't just boot off of a USB like I could with the SX0 and install whatever OS I want to run at three frames a year because the hardware is shit. I would have to kind of... Well, the only thing I can really see to do is another version of Windows CE. Microsoft had a tool similar to Target Designer. That's what I used to build the embedded image for Windows XP on the uh, SX0. 
was it project designer or something? I haven't been able to track down usable copy, but I know it can make an image of Windows CE. That and a pre-compiled image is my only two options at the moment, pretty much. In fact, I don't, I don't even know if those will work. I'm just kind of hoping that they will. We have a thingy over here that I haven't noticed before. That is not in focus. I have no idea what a uh, VS152AB DP83815DUJB is. Um, that could be on board RAM. But I can't actually get this board out. Oh, here we go. We have some stuff. We have a Windows C 2.2 key. We have a WT35LE serial number, blah, 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 blah. Go away, Facebook. I'm going to stab you. March 2002. So I'm going to get the lid back on, because there's very little else I can talk about. This camera is also focus off. Good, bad. And then we're going to boot this thing up, see what it does. Okay, I've got the device all cabled up. Before we start, I would just like to say, these DVE power supplies that you find on eBay when you search for WiseWind MWD 35 le power supply are really, really shit. And if you have one of these and need a power supply, or are thinking of getting one of these, I would have to recommend that you look for literally anything else. Even if it costs a little bit more. Because these power supplies are shit. And I'm going to tell you why they're shit. Mainly because they don't fucking work. I actually have two of these. Um, this one arrived and literally blew up. I think it was this one that blew up. No, it intermittently um, didn't work. It was another power supply that blew up. Uh, yeah, just nothing. I can jiggle the connector. Still nothing. So I'm going to have to find the other one, but it's eluding my presence. Uh, yeah, I tried to turn it on and just kill itself right in front of me. So back in a sec, when I find it... I found it! I know this one's good because I left the zip tie around it, so one power supply swap later. Let's put this where it belongs. Fuck off! Good. Now, we have an orange standby light. It looks green because the exposure's all fucked, but it is actually orange. The screen went black for a second. Let's just get this more into short. Monitor going to sleep. Why is it doing that? Now for the moment of truth. Three, two, one. We have life. Wise, Winter, Wise, ICA, Citrix, Microsoft, Windows, powered, but it's not powered by any competent version of Windows. It's powered by Windows CE, which is our code name for crap edition because it's a massive pile of shite. Windows CE was a kind of flop. Actually, everyone says that. I kind of like it for its absolute nicheness, but it was a really shit product. Microsoft! I'd have to say that this is probably up there with Windows Millennium Edition. People didn't like Vista. I've never had a problem with Vista. I've always thought that it worked pretty good once you got Service Pack 2. Initial release was a pretty hit or miss because it was just released too early for the hardware at the time. Waiting for network... Oh, fuck, I haven't plugged in an Ethernet cable. Good! Oh well, internet on this is about as bad as you'd expect running Windows C and like Internet Explorer, whatever version this is, we will check. Can you even use this without the internet? I don't actually remember. I remember when I initially got it, you couldn't because it had been locked into some Citrix ICA thing and I had to figure out how to reset it in order to make it do anything. Although even once I reset it, here we go. Okay, let's do some things. Uh, configure. That doesn't work. No, yes it does. This doesn't work, because the operating system running on my server is too new. Web connection. I've literally forgotten how to make this do anything else. F2. Doink. Ah, terminal properties. Okay, so yes, we have 160 megs of RAM. It's ignoring half of my stick, and I'm guessing half of the onboard? Yeah, 128 plus 32, yeah, so it's ignoring half of the 256 meg module and it's ignoring half of its own onboard, but that's weird. Unless it's using... Okay, that just doesn't fucking make sense, whatever. Input, English UK, numlock on boot, mouse, properties, right-handed, left-handed, no personalization. This is a very locked down version of Windows CE. When it isn't locked down, it's just kind of left alone. It's it's actually pretty interesting, and I'm trying to get my hands on just a normal Windows C device. I'm probably going to go with a thin client that's at least got the interface, because this doesn't have the start menu or nothing. Maximum this will do... Uh, piss off. Maximum this will do is 1024 by 768 at 16-bit colours, so that's 65536. 
box. Don't give a shit. En enable energy savers. Yes, those energy savers. I really want to turn them on. Uh, IP address and GATP server. Well, there isn't one because I didn't plug the internet cable in because I'm stupid. Printers. Can I add one? Nope. Web. Homepage. Wise.com. Why is that the thing? Okay. Upgrade. Oh, yeah. This is really weird. In order to upgrade the software on here, you have to point it at an FTP server that has the file structure it requires. But from what I can remember, even when I got the file structure perfectly right and I downloaded the packages directly from WISE themselves, it gave me an error saying, cannot find, what was it? Not update or inf, that was the error the SX0 gave me with the cryptographic services. It was, um, update.bin, catalog.bin, I don't fucking remember. It wouldn't find a file that was clearly there. So I kind of gave up on that. Security, admin, no, also login. Security name, hide configure, fail of mode, uh, this is where you can do a bunch of things. Let's add a user, username. I'm going to call him Bob. And he is going to be an administrator, and he is going to be able to do all of these things. Now, will that bring up a login screen when I start? I'm sure we will find out. Apps. ICA client settings. Oh, God. It's put me in something else. Uh, well, the ICA client I haven't been able to get working, so that can fuck off. There we go. Devices, adapters, oh, is this like, oh, this is, eh, it's kind of like device manager. We have a Mac Python, yeah, Mac Python DP8315, a 10100 based PCI Ethernet adapter. Any 2000 not got a clue what that is, I'm not holding the thing, there we go. Obtain an IP address, well, this is just the same settings, you can't, okay. Add-on, what's that? Dial up ICA IE version 4. I would love to remove the ICA version 6, but I can't really add it. USB modem, screensaver. This has a screensaver. This thing has power this thing is powerful enough to run screensavers. And this said it had 32 megs of RAM. That's clearly 16 with uh, 5 megs free. Date and time. Is it gonna be correct? Absolutely not. It is not 1998. I wish it was, because those are apparently the uh, years to live in. What's LPD? Oh, that's boring. Volume. This thing can make sound. Hold on, I'm going to plug this into a speaker. We're going to see if it makes any noise. Let's find out. Well, it freaking does. It's kind of cool. The, uh... The um, SX0 did, but not under Windows, because I couldn't find drivers for its chipset. Enough of that. Ooh. I've turned it into a weird kind of jukebox. System info. MAC address. Boring. IP address. Boring. Not accessible. Not accessible. Not accessible. Blah. 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 Serial number, go feel free. Device one, 16 megs. Interesting because the website said it would have 32, okay. Why is it giving me an option to apply? There is literally nothing I can change in this window. Okay. Right. Default RDP, what are the settings for that? I'm gonna point the camera away just in case it shows my password. Nope, I have no idea where that server is. I doubt it will work. I mean, it definitely won't at the moment because I don't have an ethernet cable plugged in. Connections, web connection. Let's just take a brief look at Internet Explorer. A connection with the server cannot be established. Okay, navigation canceled. Is there a... Wow, this version of Internet Explorer is really fucking primitive. Oh god, I've bollocked it. No, I want... Apparently I can't have three toolbars. Oh, I can, there we go. So I want the address bar... I want those there, and I want this to be next to it there. Is there a help thing? No, there isn't. Edit, view, go, favourites window. Is there like an about... Um, about... Version, maybe? He just brings out the word version. Lovely. I've just had a funny idea. 
about about fuck you. It just says fuck you. I can play with this all day. About uh, what else? What funny things you would make this say? Uh, this device is useless in twenty nineteen. This device is useless in 2019. Thank you. Tell me something I didn't already know. Oh, it's so primitive that uh, Alt F4 does nothing. What does Control W do? Nothing. This has no concept of shortcuts. Hang on, where's the close button gone? How do I leave? What? If I click that, it makes a noise. What about, is this how I close? Connection with the server cannot be set. How the fuck do I get out? File. Oh, I have to go file close. That's stupid. Can I print? Oh, we get to see loads of um, Windows CE printers. We've got a PCL inkjet, PC Canon BLC. Oh, BJC. Citizen. Yeah, you can use a normal Citizen's printer. Epson. Pocket Jet. Pocket Jet 2. Postscript. Print preview. And let's print a print preview. Because I've never actually seen this. Uh, let's do A4. And just see what this happens to do. A network path must be specified. Um, huh. It actually brought up a little preview window. What application would this be? Because I've never seen this before. Help. Help does nothing about. This is Jet CET Viewer. Okay, then, never heard of this. So I can literally print the phrase, this device is useless in 2019. Lovely. Uh, hide menu. How do I get that back? This device is primitive. This device is primitive enough as it is. I don't really want to be hiding things that could potentially be useful. Okay, just for shits and giggles, I guess I'm going to hook up an Ethernet connection and try and use the internet on this thing. Uh, this is going to be fun. Back in a second. Okay, I've plugged in the Ethernet to my laptop and I'm tethering the connection. Now we're going to find out if it's not enough to just pick that up or if I need to do a reboot. I need to do a reboot. I mean, it's running Windows C. It's not going to be that clever, is it? Oh, well, at least this will give me a chance to see um, if it's going to bring up the little login window thing when I start up. Let's find out. And for some reason, this thing takes ages to restart. I just think you remember that because it sits there with an amber LED for ages and then just does nothing. Also, while we wait for this to do its thing, um, I don't really talk about power draw. I don't really see it as that much of an issue. Um, when this thing is just plugged in, it uses about 9 watts. Uh, what the fuck? Never seen that before. When it's actually doing something, it uses about 12 That power supply is still probably horrendously inefficient, and I hate it, I want it to die. Here we go, same splash screen, I don't know why the splash screen needs to show for this long, if it is going to be a... I heard that beep. It'd be nice if they had like a little loading bar or something down here to say, yes, we are doing things, but no, it's just a static image. I love static images, don't you? They're so much fun, they give so much details about... What the computer's doing when it takes 50 years to fucking turn on. Nope, it didn't actually ask me to which user I wanted to use. Good! Web connection. Let's go ahead. I'm going to start with a website that I, in my experience, have found works on basically any kind of device. I don't give a shit. Well, fuck you. And that website is where I get my old software. www.old version dot com made noise oh my god it's actually doing it I mean it's missing half of the images but that's a pretty competent rendition of the website I've say myself what's scrolling speed like about as actually it's f kind of fluid considering the fact this is an almost two decade old product running 
an equally old version of Internet Explorer. It's not that bad. Um, I, ref I refuse to believe they have any software for Windows CE, but I'm just going to search for Windows CE. And see what they bring up. I mean, I doubt I'll be able to install. Fuck off. Oh, whenever I press enter, it makes that annoying noise. That's good, isn't it? I think this is where um, it stops. What if I just hit Windows? Oh, now it won't stop making that noise. I'm just going to refresh the page. Hooray! I fucked it already! I wasn't even trying. Let's do something more simple. www. Motherfuckingwebsite.com This is a motherfucking website, and it's fucking perfect. That is true. This is literally just a text website that berates your fancy website. Scrolling is actually pretty nice. For not being as simple as this one. This was created with TXTI. Uh, can I create one? Create a texty. Content required. Oh, of course! Because this web browser sucks, the web page isn't being displayed correctly. Well, that's good, isn't it? Does this have history on it? Um... Add to favorites. Well, it didn't save my window layout, so I doubt it's going to save my favorites. Now I'm going to try going back to old version. Nope, it just doesn't want to do it, does it? Anyway, this video is going on 20 minutes long, and I think we've pretty much seen everything there is to see about this device. It's niche, it's shit, but its nicheness makes it interesting. So I thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.